December 16th meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the more shopping days till Christmas. Just wanted to remind you. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, unanticipated. Does anybody have anything under unanticipated? Mr. No. 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 Board members? No. Folks? Okay. Announcements and recognitions. Um, I believe I have one. This is from uh, Chris Peck, the Director of Public Works in Middleborough, Massachusetts. We would like to do the Christmas tree pickup on the weeks of January 6th and January 13th. These weeks will get us outside of the holidays. The pickups will be on the same day as the resident trash pickup. So you, Christmas trees will be collected this year. There's no reason to bring one into the town hall. Exactly. <laughs> We're making progress. Uh, Santa Claus will be receiving visitors at the Santa's house located at Kramer Park next to the bank building on Thursday, December 19th from 3 to 7 and Saturday, December 21st from noon to 2. All are welcome. Any other uh, announcements? Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Walton? Um, the Friends of the Middleborough Public Library announced that Major League Baseball player Steve Ciszek of the Miami Marlins is going to be speaking at the library on Saturday, December 28th at 1 p.m. Ciszek is a uh, native of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and he was drafted into the, uh, he was drafted in 2007 by the Florida Marlins, and then he was called up to the majors in 2010 since then, he's been named the uh, Marlins Rookie of the Year. He's the team's closer and currently holds the longest active consecutive saves streak in all of Major League Baseball. Uh, the Friends president says this is going to be a great opportunity for students and baseball fans to come by and meet a Major League ball player and find out how a Massachusetts native made it into the big leagues. And now that their new parking lot is paved and open, parking shouldn't be a problem for anybody. Thank you. I believe the Lions are holding a, um, a blood drive on December 21st, Saturday, December 21st. I'm not sure of the location, but I think all that information is available online. Is it the Mitchell, Mitchell Club? Might be. But there's a blood oh, drive on December way. 21st. So bring your blood, and we'll find a place to drain it. Mr. Quill, anything? Uh, but, you know, I just uh, would like to recognize the DPW. You know, we've, we've already had some pretty nasty weather. I did see the uh, plows out there with the salt and sand. So uh, thank you for them for being ready in time for, uh, for our first uh, kind of nasty, dangerous road condition weather. Thank you. Any uh, announcements from the audience? Is it Bruins game on or something? Yeah. All right, Lawrence. Um, Oh, uh, I'm sorry. M meeting minutes for the uh, November 25th, 2013 regular meeting. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Now I'd entertain a motion relative to the regular meeting minutes for December 9, 2013. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Warrants. Uh, entertain a motion to authorize the chairman or his designee to sign the warrants for the week ending 12-13-2013. Motion to approve. Second. We have motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Your business. Zipping right along. We have a... <coughs> uh, license application for a common victualler at the Pizza Pirate. Uh, 
which is going to be located at 134 North Main Street. Uh, assessor's map 50 Q is in Quincy, 5542. Uh, the name of the applicant, uh, Niam Durez, uh, Middleborough Pizza Pirate. Uh, anybody wishing to be heard on this? Step right up, introduce yourself. Please give your name and address for Jackie. Hi, how are you? My name is Nick Darazi. Um, I'm from North Attleboro. Okay. I'm coming here for the Open the New Pizzeria. Okay, so. You have experience with the pizzeria? Sure, I have now four pizzeria. I have one in North Attleboro, one in uh, Franklin, one in Warwick, Rhode Island, and I have the new one in Pest Pizza here in Middleboro. So this okay. is five. I'm uh, almost like 15 years in uh, business. Okay. okay. So I want to try something new here. All right. Yeah. Any comments or questions? Comments from the board? Questions from the board? Comments or questions from the audience? Pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Go and make pizza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so sir. Much. Welcome to Middleborough. <clears throat> We have a next item on the agenda is an amendment to terminate the service agreement with uh, North Cabo Water District. Mr. Chairman, it's a termination slash service agreement with uh, the North Cabo Water District. As you know, um, several years ago, uh, they took over their uh, customers uh, uh, that Middleborough had been servicing, but we still assist them with both uh, meter readings, uh, billing, and um, sometimes repairs to their system. Sometimes we actually uh, provide water when they have uh, 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 an insufficient amount of their own. So um, you will recall a couple of months ago we extended the, extended the deadline to the agreement. Uh, they're, they're still in the process of you know, taking over these other responsibilities. I, I think they'll probably take over billing relatively soon, um, but uh, I think the service component is probably the last that they'll they'll take over. So we, we agreed to extend the agreement until the end of next calendar year, December 31st, 2014, to give them time. Hopefully, this will be the last time we have to extend the agreement and they'll ultimately take it over entirely on their own. Questions of the board? Pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Uh, any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a vote to award the 2014 SERGS contract for DPW services. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, you have a, um, a memo from our DPW director, Chris Peck, uh, where he outlines the bid. Uh, this is a regional bid through Sursage, and uh, uh, he's given you uh, examples of the, the current pricing and the, and the future pricing, and as you can see, some go up, some go down, and, and some stay the same. Mm. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. For you to Charlie, can we just pronounce what SER? Sourcesage is the Southeast Regional Services Group. So, so they that's go the collective we purchased? Yeah, they... The they um, they were formed, uh, oh, well, you know, maybe 20 years ago uh, in this in this region to jointly bid things like DPW services, uh, office supplies, and, and anything else that um, the group feels may be you know benefit from a, a larger joint purchase. Uh, these, I, I would say that the um, the DPW supplies are, are probably the most successful and the most uh, cost savings um, that you you see in these regional bids. Uh, they, they really make a difference. Uh, so, um, you, know, the, uh, you know, as you can say, uh, in place, bituminous concrete actually went down in dollar uh, fifteen uh, this year. That's, I think, reflective of um, you know probably a, you know, a number of bids, um, you know, that drove the price down. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions of the board? Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The 
guys have. Now we have Next item on the agenda is to vote to approve the 2014 Common Victor Law licenses as presented by the Health Department. Uh, all necessary inspections and so forth have been taken care of on this? Correct. All the paperwork has been submitted, to tips, taxes, and gratuities have been paid and all? To the best of my knowledge. Okay. Right. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, surrounding community agreement is the next item on the agenda. <coughs> this is with uh, between the town of Middleborough and the uh, Raynham Park LLC, Delaware Limited Liability Company. Uh, as you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, they, they did um, several weeks ago name us a surrounding community, so that um, uh, I think put our negotiations with them on a, on a much stronger footing. Uh, so they've agreed to several things in this agreement. Uh, uh, probably the most significant thing is a, a $50,000 annual community impact fee for um, the uh, impacts of the gaming establishment on, on Middleborough. Uh, that comes with an escalator, uh, which you know is two and a half percent starting in year four, uh, and then continuing. Um, they also commit to doing local hiring and local purchasing preference, uh, and uh, at our suggestion number six, they agree to assist, cooperate, and support the town in its, in its efforts to have the Mass DOT improve the Middleborough Rotary located on Route 44. So. Um, um, hopefully they'll be, be helpful to us in that, uh, in that ongoing advocacy. So uh, this is um, essentially the same form of agreement that Taunton signed several weeks ago, although they admittedly got uh, some extra money. They obviously had extra impacts. So um, I think it, um, you know, it, it's, it, I think it's a fair agreement uh, uh, given the extent of in impacts we're likely to uh, have uh, from their establishment. The first year stats in July 1st of, or <laughs> July 1st, 2014? Yeah, they gave a, an example uh, in two. Um, Number two, it says beginning 30 days after Rain and Pox commencement of operations of a category two gaming establishment at the premises. Okay. Yeah, and if they begin in the beginning of a fiscal year, it's a prorated amount. Okay. Questions of the board? Comments? Yes. I was um, I was very happy that they included the part about the rotary, because that's really what we seem to think most of the impact would be to uh, the town of Middleborough. Um, Charlie and I met with the lawyers from the parks a, a couple, couple months of weeks ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, a couple months ago. And um, I was at the meeting last Thursday, and it, if you just went to that meeting, you would think that that license is already committed to uh, Mr. Connie and his uh, the Rain and Parks Development Corporation. But uh, the thing that I, one of the things that happened at the meeting, which seemed odd to me, was they kept referring to it as a casino. So my uh, my radar went off on that one. And um, what I'm pleased with in this agreement is that it, it establishes that this agreement is predicated on Rain and Pox ga gaming establishment being limited to, to 1,250 slot machines and no table games. In the event that Rain and Pox is allowed more slot machines and or table games, then the party shall negotiate a revised <coughs> and or new surrounding community agreement. So that put my, uh, my concerns at ease. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. second. A motion and a second. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions? And uh, just so you know, we did run this by town council. He had a few comments which they incorporated. So, sorry I didn't mention that earlier. <clears throat> uh, 
All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. Next item on the agenda. There's a vote. To vote to uh, approve the betterment order for Rivers Edge. This is uh, for four thousand five hundred fifteen dollars and forty-four cents additional. Cor correct. Per. Um, and and this came in. Uh, I think um, we when we estimated this, we were estimating about one hundred and seventy-seven thousand, um, and it came in. Um, significantly less um, because we had money um, already uh, with the planning board, so it ended up coming in at about 130,000. So that's why the uh, the uh, total amount to the resident is less than we thought. So that's what they owe total, and then it'll be broken up. Or, uh, some people may choose to pay it, but if you don't and you want to put it on your tax bill, then it's it's done over a 20-year period. 20-year period. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. Are there any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item is. Actually, we're we're going to take these uh, out of order. The actual next document is a. Um, and a, a betterment assessment on um, Veronica Lane, but why don't we do the order of taking first and then we can come back to that because I think that makes a little bit more sense. That would probably make more sense if I could find it. Yeah. Uh, is this a official hearing? For this order of taking, or is this just no. a vote? It's just a vote. Just a vote. We already did all that months and months. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's approved by town meeting. So then, this is the order of taking uh, board of selectmen of town of Middleborough in the name of behalf of the town of Middleborough as a municipal corporation situ situated in the county of Plymouth. Do I have to read the whole thing? I don't think you do. I think you just vote the order of taking. Okay. Would it entertain a motion for the order of taking? Motion approved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. All right, so then if we can go back to that previous document. Th th this, um, again, Veronica Lane was like River's Edge and Edgewater where the residents agreed to pay for some of the improvements to, in order to get their street up to standard so it could be accepted. So this uh, is the vote to um, uh, assess the betterments um, for um, Veronica Lane. And again, this is based on an estimate. When we get the actual costs, we will um, then um, do what we've just done with Rivers Edge and Edgewater. We'll take a vote uh, to um, approve that betterment, but it'll be based on the actual and final cost. Well, that's good, and I just <coughs> lost everything. Oh, there we go. Not doing well with the little magic box that I have. So. This will be the order of taking for. No, this will be the uh, order of betterments. Betterments for public Veronica improvements Lane. assessment of betterments for Veronica Lane. And cost will be determined. Well, the cost is in there now. It's it's estimated to be seventy two hundred and fifty dollars. But that that's only a preliminary estimate. And when we do the final assessment, it will be based on the actual final cost. Okay. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Seeing you have your pulse on the thumb on the pulse of Donor Drive. What's yeah, the now, now we'll do the order of taking for Donor Drive. And the order of taking cost on that? No, uh, now there is no uh, cost there because this money, the, the planning board has sufficient funds to finish the road. And in that case, I will entertain a motion for an order of taking on Donor Drive. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion in a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. <coughs> Next item will be order of taking for Tall Oak Drive. For Tall Oak Drive, and, and as you recall, the, uh, the developer uh, still lives on Tall Oak Drive, and he and the residents got together and did the work um, prior to the, the town meeting vote in your order to lay out, okay. and it was satisfactory, so um, there's no betterment here either. Okay, so entertain a motion for an order of taking for Tall Oak Drive. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Well, we have a vote to uh, discuss this new traffic route for the Chop Chopquay uh, Earth Removal Permit, number 10 01. And what is the new, the new route is? East on Rocky Meadow Street, take a left heading north on Tisman, take a right heading east on Plymouth, and a left heading north on Carmel, and then a left heading west on Plimpton, right heading north on Thompson into Halifax. So this eliminates going down Plymouth to twice, yeah. to 105 and right. crossing over. Uh, any comments or questions? Mr. Chair? Chairs, yes. Are we just uh, rearranging the chairs on the Titanic on this one? Yes. Right. Basically, that's all we're doing. But it's for a short period of time. We know that this does not have a lot of life in, left in it. So, um, is it well? I, I mean, getting to what Slip and Frawley is saying, I mean, if we don't ensure that the trips per day is adhered to, you're really just, yeah. I mean, we're going to hear from some of these people because they're suddenly going to wake up and hear all this rumbling, and, you know, but regardless of which way this guy takes, if he's, if he's running too many trips through there, it's just going to be. We'll I be absolutely right agree. We're going to make sure that Mr. Arruda knows that, you know, he's got to keep to his a absolute maximum and not to exceed it because not only is the neighbor watching we're going to be watching and, and yeah. you know the board's not going to be happy if we continue to get reports that he's exceeding his his limits um, we'll make that very clear and, and also the start times yep yeah All, everything in the front has got to be in here through the okay. uh, doubt. and he could be spot checked on that and we'll verify that yep we will okay So yes, we are basically rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. But ah. <laughs> I just want to be sure. But it is something that I knew what I was getting into before I voted for it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's just one of those things. It's, you allow these permits and, you know, you want to move the dirt, some, they got to be moved somehow. Yeah. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. I don't believe Mr. Arruda is in presence with us tonight. No, he's not. No, he's tied up. Um, okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is from Environmental Partners. Sounds scary. And hey, Mr. Chairman, we have um, two invoices, um, one for the schematic design, uh, which is now 26% complete. Um, and the other bill is uh, the, the pilot testing that they're doing to assure ourselves that the, um, the process is going to work uh, as um, projected. And um, one, the uh, schematic design invoices for um, this current bill is 28,633.22, and for the pilot testing, uh, it is, I lost my place here. <laughs> 77? No. 19,432.02. Uh, 
um, we're having a meeting, just so you know, we're having a meeting Thursday to go over the schematic design, make sure we're comfortable with it going forward, and then I think early in January, we're going to have the, um, the engineer and the project manager come in and give you a presentation uh, on that, where we stand with the, um, the estimate, and, and just give you and the, the community an update on where we are. Where do we stand with this project versus EPA? You know, we EPA. submitted our comments to the EPA. You know, they, um, they made the permit a little stricter than they told us they were going to make it, and, and we asked them for a little latitude on some of the measurements, and we have yet to hear back from them. So they have not issued the um, final permit yet. They, they gave us a draft. We commented on the draft, so now we're still waiting for the final permit. Um, the percentages that we were looking to reduce or come down to lower than we first anticipated? Or? Um, a little bit, um, but I think it's more the, the way you calculate them. Do you calculate them on a, a you know a, on an average basis over a period of time, or is it is it more absolute? And, and we're looking for a little bit more flexibility in the calculation, J you know, just so it allows for seasonal and other types of variations. But 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 they're all they're all certainly achievable with this process. It's it's just a matter of. <clears throat> You know, just having a little bit, a bit of flexibility in the permit so that we don't get into a position of, uh, of exceeding anything. Okay, so uh, you need two motions or one? You can do a motion to approve the right piece bills as presented. Okay. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Comments of the board? No? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nice have it. Next item on the agenda is a one day liquor license. For William Fuller, Bartending Services of New England, for the Alley Theater, Howard. Investment Trust, is that it? Uh, this is a beer and wine license for December 17, 2013, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. For a Bridgewater Triangle documentary. Any comments or questions? Measure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is a, from uh, William Fuller, Bartending Services of New England, for the Alley Theater, Beer and Wine License, for December 31st, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m., Steve Sweeney Comedy Show. Any comments or questions? Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is a vote to amend the taxi rules and regulations to add a $20 a day penalty uh, for violations of the same. Each day of violation will constitute a separate penalty. Um, Charlie, where do we stand legally with this? Oh, well, we can do it. Um, the interesting thing is that we, um, in talking to council, um, when we adopted or we revised the taxi rules and regulations so 15 years or so ago, there was an intention to, to include a, a penalty and for some reason, because it, I think previously statute set a penalty and then the statute um, was rescinded. So, but for some reason when we revised our regs, we didn't include it at that time. So as we discussed a couple of meetings ago, we really didn't have any sanction to go along with a violation. So, uh, you know, in discussing it with um, council, uh, we wanted to make sure we, we, we didn't assess too high a penalty because it would be hard for the courts to ultimately award that. So, you know, and I think what we found out in dealing with, with Edgeway is you, you kind of needed a, a daily penalty, you know, a, a flat fee doesn't, you know, really um, encourage um, good behavior. So um, I thought a, a $20 penalty uh, per day uh, could amount to a reasonable amount of money 
uh, but not an exorbitant amount of money that the courts might balk at awarding. So, now we uh, we would have to go through the courts on this. We would we would have to, although we might want to. You know, we could always consider the non-criminal disposition angle with this. You know, we we've talked about you know adding some other things there, um, and uh, you know we we might do that um, and and see uh, if we could you know uh, add that to our ticket book. Ultimately, it ends up before a judge anyway. If, if people appeal, we we know that. Um, uh, hopefully, the uh, just the the threat of a sanction is enough to um, avoid having to, to issue the sanction. You run this by the chief of police to see how he can. You know, I'll tell you, uh, Bruce was away um, until today, and I, I meant to talk to him, and I didn't. So if you'd, if you'd rather hold off on it and have me discuss it further with him, I, I have no problem with doing it. I just wanted to—I told you I'd bring something back to you, and I, I just didn't want to wait too long. I like the idea of this, but I, I just don't know how we can. I mean, uh, to, to do a non-criminal, you know, just a parking ticket type thing. That means you're going to have, you know, tickets stacking up, and then the collection process and. Could get yeah, he, like I said, either either way, you probably end up before a judge. You know, if you don't don't do a non-criminal and you and you have to go to court and issue a complaint, then it's also a you know action before a judge. So um, it would be more comfortable if we knew how we were going to handle this administratively, issuing the fines and how we were going to enforce. Them. Yeah, I mean, if we don't do it non-criminally, then then we actually have to go to court and get the court to to issue it. You know, if you, ha if you have a non-criminal process and you issue your ticket and they pay the ticket, well, you know, it's done. Um, but they can appeal and that, that would end up before a judge. But, you know, but let me discuss it with Bruce and we can discuss it again in January. That, I, I don't mind doing that. Are you having a problem no. bringing this back? Do it right. Don't anymore. do it at all. Yes. Well, I don't have a problem doing it in January just as long as this is something that doesn't fall through the cracks. No, 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 no. Because, mm -hmm. we'll yeah, I mean, yeah. rules without a penalty. Much like my three-year-old. <laughs> and you're fine. If there's, no, <laughs> if there's no penalty involved with it, they don't listen to you. <laughs> yes, we do run into a lot of that, don't we? Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it with Bruce, and I'll discuss it with Dan some more, and I'll, we'll, we'll you know, take it up in January. Come up with a vehicle yeah. of how we can administer this without becoming too cumbersome. Okay. okay? Okay. Next item on the agenda is a discussion relative to the letter of support for the High Point project. We have a letter uh, in our packet indicating uh, that it's a letter to the Zoning Board of Appeals relative to the a letter of support for the High Point project from the Board of Selectmen. There's Several of the selectmen have been at the Board of Appeals hearings, and, well, I don't think anybody's really, I can't speak. I'm not crazy about the whole thing, uh, but, which probably isn't a choice of words, but, but the project is, uh, you know, there's two sides to every, to the, every story on this. We have an abandoned building in downtown area. We would have a non-abandoned building, a built-up building, a structure that would be functional and usable. To the tune of a $12 million construction investment. Right. Very big investment in town. Uh, flip side, it's non-taxed property. Flip side of that, if we can get payment in lieu of taxes, it's a substantial quantity. You know, maybe we we can't. One of the concerns is policing. One of my concerns is always policing. We never have enough police officers, except when you're speeding and they come right behind you. But other than that, generally there's not enough police officers. But this gives us an opportunity that, with a substantial payment in lieu of taxes, we could maybe fund civilian dispatches and put a police officer on the streets. So we get a building that's dilapidated and abandoned, being put to use, 
You get some good construction jobs out of it. You get some long-term employment in town. Some people would be able to get jobs there, and there's a disadvantage to everything. So I'd like to open this up to my board members for a discussion. Who wishes to go first? Mr. Chair. Nolte, go ahead. As we discussed in previous meetings, uh, I, I then drafted this letter to bring to the board to discuss. As you said, this is a project that's going to bring approximately 200 jobs into our community. High Point has uh, been aware of the concerns of the community. Um, they've contracted separately with the Brewster Ambulance Service, so it's not going to be a drain on the ambulance service. They've agreed to have 24-hour security on site, so 24-hour security guard right there. They have agreed to a payment in lieu of taxes. They've already made one offer of a very substantial amount of $100,000 a year. Although I would like to see an escalator such as uh, that was put in with the surrounding communities agreement with Raynham, maybe a 2.5 or something like that, um, so that 5, 10, 15 years down the road, you know, it still becomes an adequate amount of payment. But that does seem like a substantial amount of money. I think this board can express that if the Zoning Board of Appeals grants them a permit, we would welcome this influx of workers into our community and the positive economic impact that they would bring. Well, well uh, last time we talked about this letter, there was some concern and I think it was valid concern based on the fact that this board does, that this board of selectmen does appoint other members of the board. And so we have to be ultra careful um, about how we would go about doing something like this as opposed to another elected board like the G&E or even a board that we have no relevant influence on like, you know, the school committee or something like that where it's just easier to speak out to them because, you know, we have no involvement in, in how they actually form that board. So. I understand the concerns the, other, the last meeting about this letter, and, and, I, and I certainly uh, appreciate those concerns. Um, and I have read over this letter, and I was committed to not support this letter if in any way it made any kind of uh, demand or even asked the ZBA to do anything, or even hinted that we were asking them to do anything. It simply uh, states that we're excited about this opportunity. That's all it is. It's a statement. Um, so, uh, and, and I don't think it is uh, unprecedented for this board to communicate with other boards. And um, so I, I believe this is a well-written letter. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna open it up to vote here. Um, so certainly I'm, I'm willing to support at least the letter itself. Um, as far as the topic of the building, and the corporation that's looking to occupy it. Uh, I think with a lot of my members here on the board, it's not my first choice. Uh, but certainly my concern, as I've expressed, is I really don't see anything on the horizon. I certainly don't want to see it go back to what it was. It also concerns me heavily that this, this town, the government of this town, has looked at this property and walked away. And so if this was to fall through, is there any commitment by this town as plan B? And I don't see anything. So. Um, you know, th this is a, uh, a corporation that has occupied other buildings in other towns and done so in a very professional manner. A study was done. The study was released. We asked for it. And it doesn't appear that uh, some of our higher concerns are as uh, valid as we thought they were. I think this is a, is a, is a company that's made a, a real honest effort to try to um, meet as many of our demands as possible. And um, I, you know, this is a very particular structure, and um, it seems to fit, fit this particular need very well. But if this falls through, you know, I, I'm really concerned with what would happen to that building. There's a lot of business and uh, residential property around there. And uh, I, know, I know that, you know, we're, we're looking for a little more guarantee on exactly who those jobs would go to. It's very difficult, I think, for a 
business of this type to guarantee anything as far as what percentage of employment would actually go to Middleborough residents. However, I think we can expect that those people who do get, do get hired by this facility, many of them will choose to reside here in Middleborough to be close to work like a lot of people are. Um, you know, they have come through with a pilot. Um, I was, you know, I think it was also interesting about that piece of property behind Father Shea's as far as parking to see if that could also be an improved public parking solution, which would also allow them to use as for expanding parking. So, you know, it was a very positive ZBA. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think tonight, though, we're just really talking about this letter. I think it's a well-written letter, and I am prepared to support it. But we'll see what the rest of my board members think, and I respect uh, whatever your vote is at the end. Thank you. Um, I've been going to the meetings as much as I can. Uh, Toward the facility, met with Mr. Uh, Mumbo last year actually to talk about this. Um, board of Selectmen has written letters of support to the ZBA in the past regarding different projects, so it's not an unprecedented move. Uh, um, not many rush to tell any other board what to do or how to do their jobs. I have the utmost faith in them. I like the idea of a letter of support. I have some uh, editorial comments on the actual letter in front of us. But uh, all in all, I, at this moment, I think I support the uh, I support the idea of the project. But I'm going to let the ZBA do what they do best. And they'll, uh, they'll come up with the conditions and the terms of the agreement. That's not, I think, for us to get into that is uh, overstepping our boundaries. But, um, that report, I believe, is is that report available online yet? Um, I'm not sure it is online, but we can put it there. All right, because I volunteered you to do that on Thursday. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, so the, the consultant's report regarding the impact of the project on the town of Middleborough will be available online for people to read. There are some significant impacts. Uh, one of the things that s stuck out to me was that the uh, the report indicated that there would not be a decrease in uh, home values of the home surrounding the, the proposed project, but Mr. Spataro brought up the, a very valid point that they hadn't spoken to any local realtors. So we, we asked the board, if they would, the ZBA, if they would look into that for us. Uh, and I'm anxiously awaiting that, those findings. But uh, yeah, all in all, I, I like the idea of a letter of support from, to the ZBA regarding this project. The ZBA has asked all department heads to weigh in on this project, so they're asking us, so I'd hate to disappoint them. Uh, do you want to get into the editorial comments, or? Why, certainly. Uh, I look forward to your editorial comments. All right. Um, I want to remove locked rehab treatment center because that is not what it is. It is a secure psychiatric evaluation. And the devil is in the details on this one. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, can you just repeat that? I, I'm, I'm just trying to follow you. The third right. line, the second and third line, we discussed his intention to bring a locked rehab treatment center. It's not a locked rehab treatment center. It's a secure psychiatric evaluation center, site, whatever you want to call it. Okay. The, uh, and I don't think it's any of our business about the, the last sentence. The Board of Selectmen is well aware of the need for rehab and treatment centers in our state. I think that's... Uh, an opinion sentence yeah and I don't think it has anything to do with the project I agree as the author of the uh, letter do you have any objection to those changes I have no objection I'm not done though I didn't think you were. <laughs> There's more than two words here so I'm sure you can find something no I think all in all it's a, a well-written letter but it's uh, it's I wouldn't want to have to draft this No. I think bringing, we should mention somewhere in there, I think it was the $10 million in uh, payroll or economic development that will be coming into yeah, town. I think it's $10 million dollars in re redevelopment of the property, I think is what they're talking about. It was um, $12 million investment in the community as far as construction, but then there was a piece in there about $10 million salaries going into okay. that. So I think that might be something nice to bring up. Probably get that into the first sentence of the first paragraph. Sounds good. 
But yeah, and I do appreciate, just as a, a side note, I do appreciate Mr. Mombauer's uh, willingness to work with us. I mean, he got that report on Wednesday, and stood up on Thursday and said he'd make a $100,000 pilot payment right. pretty quickly. So other than that, yeah, I, so I think that's about it for me. Is there any uh, desire to add any of the uh, items that we might have discussed or thought about into this for I like I mean I'm my opinion on that is that I think Slutman Quell and Slutman Frawley both spoke to the fact that we're absolutely fine with the zoning board of appeals making those decisions and working out those details and that it's not this board's job to negotiate with High Point. And this letter is not a negotiation. This letter is just saying that if they deem fit to issue a permit, we're looking forward to welcoming High Point and those workers and the economic impact. The you want to say that, though, maybe at the end, that, that this letter isn't to the suggestions on the board that they not? <coughs> I don't think we want to put in the letter what the letter isn't. Add a negative. Or well, you can say it in a positive. Yeah, uh, Mr. McKinnon. Without, without, you know, without getting, you know, if you don't want to get into details, I just don't think you want to suggest that we're, you know, that they shouldn't negotiate I don't think conditions. I don't think we need to mention negotiating the conditions at all. That's not what this is about. Well, Mr. McKinnon, I actually, I, I thought your statement on Thursday at the meeting, I, I fully support that idea. I thought it was actually quite intelligent. <laughs> and uh, there you go. You heard it. But <coughs> someone to give you that idea. But I don't think it's our place as a board to suggest that, but if we have comments or suggestions to the ZBA as citizens of the town, we, we're certainly more than welcome to go there and say our piece. They, they're inviting the public to make comments, and we are still part of the public. Okay. I would, uh, I would like to take a couple minutes, just a couple minutes, to let anybody out in the audience who might wish to. <coughs> it's a shock. Just a couple minutes. Yeah, I will. It'll be real fast. Um, Steve's photography. Because we don't, uh, yep. you know, Steve, we, all we're doing, we don't have any, yep. charts and graphs won't help us at all. No, no. I just need to give you this stuff. Uh, before I pass it around, Steve. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the Planning Commission. Let's assume High Point comes. Uh, Middleborough will be the uh, number one facility for inpatient, uh, the largest facility right now that they have for inpatient as of 2012 is uh, 2,122. We'll have about 3,600 uh, uh, patients uh, being seen in the middle now. This is uh, their revenue, $49 million worth of revenue that uh, comes in from High Point. Um, this is a listing of all the uh, Human Services Organizations in the state of Massachusetts, and the president of High Point is in the upper third. So, uh, why am I showing you these? Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals does a wonderful job, but when McLean was coming into town, they asked McLean for nothing. Uh, at the meeting on Thursday night, uh, John Witten said that uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals could ask for three things, money, land, and things. Um, you folks are the keepers of infrastructure. So the zoning board has no idea about uh, the parking lot. The zoning board has no idea about the traffic studies that have been done. Uh, the zoning board doesn't have any, um, Neil, who's here, talked about the enterprise funds and how it would be a big boon to us to have uh, somebody else helping with the surge expense. But when we looked at, uh, for those people that are new, when we looked at uh, providing water to uh, Cisco when it was going to Lakeville, we knew that there was some pumps at the uh, sewage treatment plant that were on its last legs. And the potential of taking on that additional uh, uh, gallonage might break those uh, uh, pumps. 
So, you know, we have retained earnings that have been over time, but they're not for new customers. Those were there to, uh, for plant and equipment based upon the past users. So I think you could draft a letter that uh, said, you know, we're interested in supporting, uh, welcoming High Point if they did the following. Uh, again, if, if uh, John Witten had come back to them and said, you can't ask for anything, you should take this $100,000, that isn't what he said. Steve, when you came up with the idea of uh, uh, civilian dispatchers and other things came up, he said, you absolutely can ask for it. And again, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals doesn't know what to ask for because they don't know the cost of the different infrastructure. So uh, I guess I would ask you to consider the idea of uh, their, their next meeting is the 9th of uh, January. They're going to have a uh, peer review of the building. Um, I know we have the holidays. But if you folks could caucus and say, you know, we're interested in uh, uh, a, um, a uh, support with uh, stipulations. Um, you know, the cost that you were talking about on top of the $100,000 could be a couple of hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. So after we have uh, the uh, fee for the building department and after the payroll comes, uh, we have 795 people in the state of, uh, in the town of Middleborough that are health care. But I bet you a quarter of those people aren't uh, psychiatric nurses. So the percentage of the new jobs that are coming into Middleborough may be, what, 20%? So it's not 200 new jobs that the town benefits for because we don't get uh, the income tax. So, you also, so just like when we talked about the casino, some opportunity to get ongoing revenue from the hospital uh, would be advantageous to the town. Now, they, in their annual report, do a balance sheet. They don't do an income statement because it's a not-for-profit organization. But I talked to Al Rulo, a former chairman, who's a CPA by background. He says he can back into what the income is from the change in the balance sheet from year to year. And he offered up that as a service, not to me, to you folks. Because if we can figure out what this organization makes as an income, um, clearly the uh, uh, last published uh, amount for the uh, president was $212,000 in uh, 2011. And he's been getting an annual increase, a compound annual growth rate of 8.74%. So take 2012, 2013, he should be making roughly about a quarter of a million dollars. These people have money to contribute to the town of Middleborough, especially where will be their largest inpatient facility in their network. So I would ask you not to go without giving guidance to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, they could, I think they would welcome it if positioned correctly. Um, they weren't thinking this way. Their attorney had to get up and say, you can ask for a lot if you so desire. If it was a not, if it was a for-profit organization, we would probably would be doing that as well. Uh, this will be in the center of town. It will change the character of town. When I say to you Taunton, what do you think about if you've been around for a long time? Taunton State. If I said to you Bridgewater, you'd say Bridgewater College. Next, you'd say the prison. If you were near Westboro, you'd say Westboro State. So this has, a, as the number one employer in the center of town, has the opportunity to uh, kind of be a, uh, a watershed as far as the uh, reputation of the town. Nothing wrong with a psychiatric hospital, but let's get our fair share from this business that clearly makes money, even though it's a nonprofit. I did ask the president after the meeting on Thursday, I said $100,000 isn't enough, I hope you're bringing a lot more. He said uh, we're a, a not-for-profit organization and we give back to our clients, to give back to charities. Well, Middleborough's a charitable organization and he can give to us. I hope you guys would look at something significantly more than $100,000 as their reimbursement for bringing such a large institution to the center of Middleborough. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'll be brief. My name is Brian Jimenez. I live on Rocky Meadow Street. The one item that comes to my mind whenever I think of the redevelopment of that property, regardless of what was there, is for years we've been applying for uh, economic development grants for John Glass Square, Everett Square, up and, and down, actually heading towards the downtown. Uh, we, we've applied again this year, and we just can't seem to get over the hump. And that's in the heart of where we are. And I would love for them to maybe help us, maybe work with us, maybe give us half or we'll get half. And if we go in for a grant and we've got someone ponying up half the money, we may have a better chance of getting that grant. 
And I know it's not an endless bucket of money. We shouldn't look at it that way. It's not a cash register, but that's something that in that area, if they're creating the two, 120 jobs right in that immediate area, they're gonna, they're gonna increase traffic a little bit there. They may have a, an additional impact uh, during ch shift changes or at lunchtime. So that's an item that I just, I don't think anyone considered that. I, I, I just was one of those items. I mean, you guys might have and just not discussed it, but I mean, it's something that I haven't heard come up is we've been over and over again applying for these grants to get that work done. And it's a million dollars worth of work or, or so, and it'd be something that'd be nice to traffic calm in that area. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Neil Rosenthal, 78 Cedar Street. I also am a member of the Business and Industrial Commission, have been for many years. <clears throat> and uh, I guess that when the fellow offered, uh, Mr. Mumbar offered 100,000, I knew immediately that uh, that would double, triple, quadruple, 10 times, 100 times, 10 million a year, whatever, I guess. But uh, the truth of the matter is that <clears throat> uh, Middleborough has less business uh, percentage-wise relative to the amount of residents, residential property than we ever have in, in the reasonable past. And uh, we've been going nowhere fast. Uh, the notion of holding these folks up for some kind of ridiculous sum in order to put a business in Middleborough uh, just strikes me as uh, just the wrong attitude. You know, I think within reason, you could ask anybody coming to town to be a, a contributor and all that, but I certainly don't think that we want to let this get out of hand because we will lose this business if we get stupid about this. Uh, I think what you fellows had in mind in the beginning was the right thing. You send a letter basically simply supporting the idea from an economic standpoint uh, and let the Board of Appeals uh, do the rest. They certainly know how to look at traffic studies and all the rest of it. They've been doing it for years. And I don't think that they really need help with that. But as uh, Mr. Frawley suggested, uh, attend those meetings as uh, individual uh, citizens of the town and uh, speak your piece and uh, say whatever you want. But uh, I think really we're very lucky to have this opportunity. <clears throat> that building has sat there now for years and years and years. Uh, at, at, for, at first, uh, we never even considered having it be anything but uh, reused as a hospital. And uh, over time, of course, as that hope waned, uh, we went on to look at it as, as uh, using it for other purposes simply because it's a blighted area and, and not helpful uh, to the overall town of Middleborough. Uh, now we have a chance to bring a hospital in there, and frankly, one that probably will be less problematic than a traditional hospital with an emergency room. All you have to do is go to Morton Hospital or any other emergency room, and you see what goes on there, and uh, you, you could see that uh, there's no control over who walks in there or who walks out or what they want. And uh, this, this appears to be a very controlled, a very professional organization, and I think uh, we'd do well to support them coming to the town of Middleborough. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any other comments? Mr. Chair? Mr. Uh, just to reiterate, while I appreciate everybody's comments about this project, we're not the ones making the decision. If you want your opinions to be heard, you have to go to the ZBA meeting, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and let your opinions be heard there because I don't know if they watch this meeting. I hope they do, I assume everybody does, but if you want your opinions to go on record, if you want your information to go on record, go to the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing and submit your comments there, because we're not making this decision. This is up to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Uh, is there any flavor on the board for including any uh, wish list items to this letter? Okay, pleasure of the board. Mr. Chair. Mr. F Mr. Nolton. I move that we approve this letter and send it to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals with the three additions of changing the language to a locked rehab treatment, a uh, make it a secure psychiatric, psychiatric evaluation. evaluation. Um, the Ten million dollar uh, salary amount. Ten million dollar salary, and also the uh, cost of the rehab of the building itself. Is that what you would? Twelve million dollar. Construction Twelve million dollar investment. construction investment. Okay, we have a motion, and and I think he suggested you take out the last sentence in paragraph one. Oh, and removing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
Removing the last sentence yeah. of paragraph one. Uh, just as a, a matter of form, do we, should we address this to Chairman Atwood? He has recused himself. Yeah, it should go to, uh, I think, Eric Priestley. Eric Priestley? I, I think he's, so. He's acting chair for us, so make it, send this to Eric Priestley. Okay, we have a motion with some amendments, but we'll include that in the motion. So moved. And second. a second. Uh, any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Next item on the agenda. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Uh, that offer from Al Rulo to take a look at it and uh, look at the income uh, production. Sure. Uh, I, do you want me? Uh, he said he'd do it if anybody was interested. And if nobody's I'm interested. I'm interested. Okay. I'll have him do it. I'll have him to provide it to you. And you can have him give me a call. Okay. And I'll All take right. it to the. Watch out for the poll. I'll take it to the ZBA room. Okay. okay. Thanks. Don't hit the poll. Next, next item on the agenda is an application addressed to the Board of Selectmen, none of which are listed on here that are here anymore, but that's okay. For the Mitchell Club, for a change of uh, license, or uh, manager rather, um, the uh, old manager, Richard Andrews, is, is out, and Mr. Thomas Dubrowski is in, uh, or is the candidate. We have uh, Corey back on. Yeah, All set. Any any outstanding taxes or anything? Nothing. They just had the permit. Okay. Do we have to open this as an official hearing? No. No. Okay. Right. Mr. Dabrowski, are you on site in here? I believe he couldn't attend. Couldn't attend. Okay. Uh, pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, next item on the agenda is Rolling Thunder and a request to display a POW MIA chair in the town hall. Mr. Chairman, the Rolling Thunder asked me to introduce uh, Joe Dutremont, who's the uh, president of the local chapter. So come on up, Joe. Thanks, Paul. Mr. Chairman, uh, members, uh, select my members. Uh, my name is Joe Dontremont. I'm uh, president of Rolling Thunder uh, here in Massachusetts. Uh, we are a POW MIA awareness group. Uh, basically, what we do is uh, just try to educate the public uh, here in Massachusetts. We have 93 chapters across the U.S., but uh, we try to um, educate the public on the amount of uh, POW MIAs there are from America's past wars. And uh, since World War I, there are 91,719 members of our military that have yet to come home. And um, are there any members from the, the board that have served? Great, thank you for your service. Um, we have a, um, a brother um, of, uh, William Smith is a, a resident of Middleborough. And uh, his brother is uh, with us here today, uh, Bob. And I just wanted to recognize Bob. Uh, Bob's brother is uh, a POW MIA. Um, I'd like to say uh, thank you to uh, each and every member of uh, this, an awful lot of uh, members here uh, from our military uh, supporting this, uh, this, what we're trying to do here across the, the state. We've, uh, we've gotten these POW MIA cheers at uh, all the major arenas in Massachusetts, uh, Gillette Stadium, Fenway Park, uh, Boston Garden. And once we did that, we have one at the USS Constitution. And once we did that, we thought, uh, what better way to spread this awareness than to try to hit uh, all 351 uh, cities and towns in the, in the Commonwealth of Mass. So um, I don't know if you're aware, but there is still one current uh, POW MIA uh, from Afghanistan, um, Bowie Bergdahl who has been missing four years and, and is alive. And uh, this is just to, what we're trying to do is just to spread awareness uh, with this program. And uh, I, I brought a chair. Paul, if you could just uh, bring the chair in. It, it, it takes up very little room. But uh, you know we don't want this, uh, if it's something that Middleborough decides to do, we don't want it 
um, you know, put in a corner somewhere or, you know, upstairs where no one's going to see it. It's, it. it's all about trying to spread awareness. And with this chair here, you, you could open that. With, with this chair here, this is something that, um, yeah, just. Oh, you'll have to help him. Paul's not very yeah. tech savvy. That's, it's true. <laughs> Um, with a chair like this, uh, this is something that you can uh, bring to the schools in Middleborough and uh, not just keep it here at, at, at Town Hall. Uh, what we recommend is that uh, you use a chair like this or similar. Uh, we used to have chairs and we put plaques behind them. This, this chair here is uh, it's, it's made up in Maine. It's what you see in the NBA um, that the players sit on and um, the cost of something like this is, is $100. And um, you can, you know, the, the plaque is right here. You don't have to put a plaque behind it, affix it to a wall. Uh, this, this is 100% mobile. Um, American flag on one side, POW flag on the other side. We like to put stanchions in front of them so that people don't sit in them. And um, I, I just think it's a, it's a very useful tool uh, for both for your, your VSO and um, it, it's, it's a great way to uh, spread awareness uh, throughout the, the, uh, the town of Middleborough. So this is, uh, this is just one example. You can use any kind of chair. You can, you know, um, there are many. Uh, we, we probably have close to 50 now uh, towns across the Commonwealth that have uh, done this so far. So uh, this is what we're asking. And um, I don't know if it's something that you can discussed tonight, but it's a, it's, it's a minimal cost uh, to the town itself. Okay. Um, gentlemen? Motion to approve? Second. We have a motion and a second. You're a hell of a salesman. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we have somebody that wants to speak. Yeah. So before we have the vote, I will. Hey, Mr. Chairman, this is about awareness. And as we mentioned Would you before, introduce important, yourself, please, sir? Uh, Bob Lassard, 844 Plymouth Street, Thank you. Uh, American Legion, uh, Post 64, Simeonelle Nickerson. Uh, this is about awareness. We do have an individual who never returned from Vietnam. It's William Mark Smith, and I'd like to give each one of you a copy. In 2006, uh, we did a review of the 15 casualties from the Vietnam era from Middleborough, and we published a booklet by the Middleborough Veterans Council, and we passed it out to the citizens of Middleborough. It was so well received that we printed another additional 100 in 2009. And what I'd like to do is incorporate the uh, review we did and the uh, highlights on William Mark Smith. He was 21, born in New Bedford on April 2nd, 1949, a 16-year resident of Middleborough, and a staff sergeant, E-5 in the U.S. Army, and a rifleman serving with Company B, 3rd Battalion, 8th Infantry, 4th Infantry Division, and was reported missing in action on March 3rd, 1969. A report stated that Smith while with his unit about 25 miles east of the city of Khantoum, disappeared after falling down an embankment. Members of the unit returned to look for him, but miscommunications from the front claimed Smith had returned to the head of the column. It was later learned that he had been captured by the enemy. Interviews with former prisoners in the spring of 1973 revealed that Smith had died while on a trail to North Vietnam. According to the debriefings, Smith had been taken by a Viet Cong prison guard to a latrine. The POWs heard him shout and were later told by prison guards that he fell and hit his head and died. The U.S. government has declared him dead by hostile actions three years after the incident. His body has never been found. He was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Richard Smith of 2 Starlet Avenue. He is also survived by two brothers, Robert and Richard, and three sisters, Susan, Shirley, and Sandra. A 1967 graduate of Middleborough's Memorial High School, 
the class yearbook, which includes his picture on page 35, states, Bill likes physical education and plans to be a future teacher in that area. William Mark Smith's name is listed on panel 30, panel 30 W, line 32 of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington. Now, Mr. Chairman, the American Legion post over here in Thatcher's Row, we already have a chair in there for the MIA's POWs, and I think it would be prudent for the town of Middleborough to take possession of one of these chairs. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Don Trenner, 3202 Oak Point Drive. The American Legion will pay for the chair. Comments or questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that chair be placed on display at all future town meetings. Absolutely. Second. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> Thank you very much for uh, bringing this here. Thank item on the agenda is uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Robert Weaver, Sports Limited, Class 2 Automobile Dealer License, uh, mm -hmm. discussion of a license violation, excessive vehicles on the property. Mr. Weaver? Yeah, uh, Mr. Weldon came down and I did have uh, more than I should have and I moved them and uh, he inspected today and I was up to uh, code today, and uh, what happened was I uh, took in a lot of work from other dealers to repair some of their cars. Some of them were unrepairable, so a lot of the cars they didn't pick up, and I had over the amount that I should have had uh, probably on the property. But they they're in a locked, uh, gated area, and they weren't you know they weren't for sale. They were there to be repaired. But I've since moved them. I believe it came to the board's attention that this was not the first time this has happened. But well, about 10 years ago, I had about five extra cars. Mr. Uh, Whalen, do you have yet. any input on this? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bob Whalen, Middleborough Building Commissioner. Uh, we started doing the Class Two license inspections at the end of August. Uh, the end of August was the first time I paid a visit to the establishment. Uh, there were 50 vehicles on site at th that time. Uh, I was out there a total of four times. Last time I was out there uh, was the last week in November. And at that time, there were still had the 40 vehicles on site. Uh, Bob, can you comment though in, in the past uh, your inspection? Last year, yeah, last year was the same thing. Uh, every time I went there, they were over. Uh, 
usually when I went back in the following months, he was down to the right number. This year, we just never got there. Okay. You inspected it today, though, right? What's that? Sir, you'll have to speak to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I said you had not you inspected it today, though. Okay. So I, I was at the right amount? I was there today at 1 o'clock. They just finished moving the one last vehicle down to the other lot on Wareham Street. Uh, they did solve the problem of having too many vehicles uh, at his Class 2 license, but we do now have another problem because I now have 15 unregistered vehicles on a lot on Wareham Street. I have informed the applicant that these cannot stay there, and uh, he has agreed to move them within two weeks. So since at least August, you've been out of compliance with your... I, I, I had too many cars there, you're correct. But they were, like I said, they were there for repairs. Well, the license is for 25 vehicles, not 28, But I didn't have, I, I, didn't, I didn't have more than 25 for sale. I only had 25 for sale. The other ones were there for repairs. This condition it says 25 vehicle limit period 25 vehicles that's it all right it's my own yeah, i made a mistake i apologize i uh i don't like shutting any kind of business down that's i appreciate certain. that thank you but i also can't have you flaunt people flaunting i i the, you're right we don't I, have very I'll, many I'll, rules I'll, and I'll regulations i don't think we're Onerous. No, and, no and, you've been very kind. Nobody's bothered you all year no, long until no, August, and then you're right. Um, I think you have to. I don't think we issued this, or, or did we? No, we didn't. We, we held it out. You can issue this with the caveat that we're going to do some spot inspections, and it should those spot inspections turn up more than 25 vehicles, we can revoke the license? We can certainly take action. I, I, I assume up to or including revocation. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just so we make sure we're clear on this um, with Mr. Whalen here, I, I just need clarity here so, and so you understand exactly. Sure. 25 vehicles is the max. And I, I don't know, so I'm asking the question. 25 vehicles is the max regardless of the reason it's there. Is that correct? Is that correct, sir? At the time when the applicant went for this class two license, I, there is a brief history on it. The site, it's a very small site and surrounded by wetlands, so there's not a lot of area on this site. I believe that's why it was limited to the number of 25 cars. So regardless of the reason, this is not about sale or repair or anything. It, so it's 25, 25 cars, cars on the okay. lot. Thank you, sir. John, any questions? Yes. Um, I'm a little concerned about these 15 vehicles that need to be taken care of too. Is that going to, uh, that's a two week period. Can we tie approval of this to that and say, you know, that needs to happen? I don't, I don't want to get in a situation where, you know, we have a continuing issue. Well, um, by moving the, the vehicles, he's in compliance. So I, I, I don't think you want to tie that, but I, I think Bob has pointed out correctly that he's created a zoning violation where he's moved them and he's right. got to clear that up other, otherwise so he fixed it's a, one problem and created another he's created another so that's that would be a separate action we'd have to take if he then doesn't clear it up but it sounds to me like well, he's promised to do that so i think we let him you know follow through on his commitment and, um, if not then we have to take action all right mm -hmm. so if this goes through mm -hmm. in my Board members but make that decision. I don't. I'm I, no, I, I understand. But can, can I, may, may, I, may, I, may, I, may I address it a little further? Mm -hmm. When I did move the cars, okay, I brought them to a repair facility. So the cars that are there are there to be repaired. I have documentation that the place where I moved, I didn't just put them on a private lot so they're, they're, they're at a repair facility to re, be repaired. And I made an agreement that as I sold or got rid of a few of the cars that I have on my lot, once they repaired one, I'd bring one back for sale. So it's not that they're on someone's private property. They're in a repair facility. Mr. Chair? Yes. 
what's the maximum allowed vehicles at the repair facility you brought them to? I, I, I don't know because I don't own it. Bob, that Bob knows. I, 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 I mean, I don't, I, I, I have no idea. Right. The trucks are currently located at a trucking company. The trucking company owns a repair facility, which is in Wareham. So the cars right now are not at a repair facility. They are sitting in a lot of a trucking company. So the trucking company owns a repair facility, but the repair facility is in Wareham. And the trucking company lot is in Middleborough. So the vehicles are now stored on a trucking company lot, but the lot name has repairs stuck in it somewhere. They do that repair trucks there and cars. They have two facilities. They have one in Wayham, and they own this one in Middleborough. It's called K Trucking and Sun. I have a letter from them. So I don't, I mean, I, I was only going by what they told me. I mean, if, if they don't have the proper uh, facility to keep them, I will move the cars, no problem. Okay. But I'm just, you know, I'm just going by what I was told. That right. it was, so you've got two weeks to take care of those 15 vehicles. Well, I didn't. I I, I, I I didn't ask for two weeks. I never. We never discussed the two weeks. Okay. Maybe on this one. No, I didn't. I I, 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 I asked. I, I said I needed at least thirty days. You asked for thirty days. I said two weeks. I, I well, started well, that week. Well, into well, the microphone, Steve, gentlemen. Okay. Into the microphone. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I with, with, with all days. due respect, it's taken four months for these fifteen vehicles to move one mile down the road. I I find it. Well, that like. Kind of hard to believe that to get to Wareham, they still have to go nine miles. Is that going to happen in two weeks? I don't think so. Well, the bottom line is this. I mean, what am I supposed to do with the cars? I, I, need, I mean, I paid for the cars. They need repairs. I, I brought them to a place to be repaired. What am I supposed to do with them? I mean, I'll tell me what I'm supposed to do with them. I'm, I brought them to a place. They told me they repair cars. Mr. Weaver, what you're supposed to do is you're not supposed to have more than 25 vehicles on your lot That's, at one time. You are correct. You've been out of 100 percent correct. You've not been in compliance since August. Right, you are we correct. We don't want to give you a hard time. That's I, not I our appreciate job. that. But you're giving us the runaround, and we don't. We certainly don't appreciate it. Well, I'm not giving you the runaround. It, it, you know what? It, it feels that way. Well, I'm, I apologize and, and if it does. I'm going to go with that feeling. Okay. Especially when I see the look of frustration on the okay. building commissioner's face. It took you four months to move 15 cars one mile down the street into a, at a trucking lot. Those are, these are the facts now. It's not, it's not a repair shop. It's a lot. The repair lot is in Wareham. I didn't have 40 cars on, my, on that lot at all times. That is did you have more than 25 since August? Yes, I did. All right, then. Yes, so I did. Go. If you break the law, you're breaking the law. Okay. We just want you to be in compliance. Because if we let you do this, we have to let everybody do it. And that's not how we're, we're going to operate. And I appreciate that. Right? Thank you. All right, so the 15 cars, you got to do something with those. And I agree with Mr. Whalen, two weeks is a good target. Uh, you may not agree with that, but then again, it has been four months. So um, spread them to different repair shops. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. That I don't run your business. Okay, That's I your, understand. your business to run your business. I'll just have to bring them to other we repair shops. We can't have more than 25 vehicles on that site. Period. Okay. If the board elects to go with allowing you to have a license tonight, you're going to be spot checked. Mm -hmm. You're going to be spot checked more than other people because I understand. you're here. Yep. Uh, but I just want to be treated fairly. That's all. I just want to be treated fairly. It would be more than fair to be honest right. with you. Okay. I think. All right. That's fair. Okay. Yep. Uh, pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. With the caveat it's that there are random checks, spot checks. And in the, the 15, any violations, in two weeks, we have another, another 15 vehicles are gone. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have. May I uh, may I ask one other question? If in fact the, the fellow that has a, if I don't leave all 15 there, and he does have a repair. A, license there to repair some of these cars is it okay if I have a few cars repaired there if he's got a license to repair yeah okay all right thank you but not 15 
Okay. Not 14. All right. Took out my Christmas. Next item on the agenda is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, first item in my report this week is a letter from uh, Maya, our insurance company, uh, announcing some additional participation credits of uh, about $4,700 uh, between property and casualty and workers' comp. Um, these are credits because the, uh, the, the, the pool uh, of the trust is doing well, and uh, rather than hold on to the money, they're um, bring, uh, giving the money back to the members. Uh, and that's in addition to about $40,000 in rewards that we've earned for our um, efforts at uh, reducing our losses and, uh, and, and training our staff to uh, 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 not cost money for, for insurance. And uh, uh, again, Maya's the only insurance company that uh, I'm aware of in this area that, that does that. And uh, it, uh, it's a nice incentive to have to, to save the taxpayers money on, on, on insurance coverage. Um, the second item, I uh, just wanted to share with you uh, a letter from Steve Smith to uh, uh, the Mass DOT uh, regarding three important projects in the region and, and one of which he mentions uh, the Middleborough Rotary. Uh, he testified last week at the uh, hearings on the transportation bond bill uh, and that was the purpose of, of putting this letter uh, in the correspondence tonight uh, to I uh, just let you know that that SERPA continues to, to advocate for the Rotary uh, on our behalf and at, at every opportunity they can, which I, I think is um, what we would hope they would do, and, and, and they're doing it. Um, uh, I also gave you a couple pieces of correspondence from the Conservation Commission regarding uh, NSTAR and the uh, the clearing of the of the right of way. Uh, mm -hmm. They've asked uh, in, NSTAR to file to. Um, uh, review the wetland resource areas uh, along the right-of-way and they've also requested uh, of uh, the National Heritage Program uh, that the, um, the Commission can review the, the plan uh, in regards to that that program as well uh, um, so uh, we continue to um, try to find ways to uh, address the concerns brought to us by, by the residents along the right of way. Uh, I, I even had a conversation with uh, Carter Fay uh, from Environmental Partners um, about this, uh, and uh, he pointed out that they, they needed to have a, uh, a stormwater pollution prevention plan, uh, and uh, um, you know they you know have uh, filed for a permit, and uh, he gave me some additional information about that. Uh, we also had the conversation about what we discussed a couple weeks ago, which is a local bylaw uh, that would require them to, um, it, it, if they were clearing more than a certain amount of acres, that they would have to come uh, before, uh, say, the board here, uh, you know, to um, present their plans before they they do future clearing. Um, and remember, uh, I think at our last town meeting, we approved you know one one stormwater bylaw, you know. The EPA wants us to adopt another one in regards to clearing large acreages, and that might be the, the, you know, the ability of ours if we pass that to also um, prevent what happened this time from happening again, which means that they would have to come in in advance uh, and present their plans. So we'll continue to work on that. Uh, and then, uh, coincidentally, um, you know, we received information about a, uh, another right of way a uh, hearing coming up regarding to uh, uh, regarding um, uh, National Grid and, and their plans for vegetation management. And it sounds innocuous on its face, but <laughs> after we've just what we've just went through, <laughs> we're going to look, look very hard at this to make sure it doesn't include something that uh, uh, is similar to what we've just been through. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, we will we will get to the bottom of that and, and make sure and find out if it is routine or if there's something more there. Um, and then uh, a, a correspondence from uh, uh, town council um, uh, with a, a stipulation which settles the, um, the dispute with uh, um, Morgan management over the uh, rent uh, increase uh, hearing that we had a couple years ago that uh, they, uh, they appeal. Uh, and then um, two other matters, um, just a reminder, Wednesday night we have the Sada Sunderman hearing on the landfill, uh, 7 p.m. here. Uh, will be conducted by um, Attorney Shea, who will be the hearing officer. So uh, 
um, and we should be getting you the pre-filed testimony tomorrow, so you'll have a chance to review it prior to the, the hearing. And uh, this afternoon, we did have that meeting with Aaron Gornstein uh, at uh, DHCD about the um, Shoe Shop Place project. And uh, while we didn't, um, you know, get a resolution uh, uh, to the denial, um, you know, there is another round coming up. Uh, Pre-applications are due January 17th. Uh, we're going to have another, actually we'll have a conference call with them probably on January 6th. To, to address the, the new concern they've raised, and, and hopefully this is the last concern, and, and that project finally gets funded. Um, but uh, we had a, you know, uh, an hour-long meeting uh, up at uh, uh, Mr. Gornstein's office, and uh, um, you know, hopefully this is the, the final obstacle to that project. Is there anything we can do on that? Yeah, I, I'd suggest right? the board send a letter, and I'll bring one to you for the next meeting. I, I think if they saw a letter from the, the entire board, you know, with all your signatures, you know, just further emphasize the, that this project is important, important locally and, and, you know, that hopefully it gets their attention. Can we ask, our, do you think it would help if we ask our state reps and senators? They've always them? been good when, you know, the, Part of the whole process is uh, our letters from the delegation. They've always been good about doing that, you know, all of them. So, you know, that um, they every time we've we've brought this forward, they've they've helped out on that score. That's it. That's all I have. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Chair. Mr. Frawley. Did we skip over uh, Mr. Holstein? Oh, and no. that got canceled. Uh -huh. Sorry. No, that was canceled. All right. Um, I did want to just ask or add one thing about the Insta. Um, I heard it on pretty good authority. The woman's, they're doing it in the woman's backyard. But uh, NSTAR is installing new, uh, new towers. Yeah, we, we they're drilling. They, they are, but they're, they're, my understanding is those are replacements for, for what existing. they have. Yeah. That's, that's the I way. I figured they had figured out how to circumvent the rules. Yeah, you know, in fact, when um, um, it, it came up, uh, I think in discussing this, this with Trish Cassidy that they did file in Carver and they filed in Carver with the CONCOM because they in fact were adding new, a new line. And so I said, well, let's, let's look into that because if, you know, if they're doing it in Carver, maybe they're doing it here and maybe they should have filed here. And, and they, they weren't. You know, this is, I, I'm, I'm told, a replacement for existing. Uh, so. Their ability to get around these rules well, is they're, amazing. They've, it no, really I mean, is. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, they, they seem to have an answer for everything. Uh, and they have a trump card for just about everything. Everything yeah. local that we have in place to prevent this kind of thing, they trump. So, um, but, but hopefully between, you know, new regulations and maybe new legislation, maybe th this is the last time we ever have to go through this. Hey, Mr. Chair, maybe. you presented a I guess it was my state law, I want to say chapter 87, you, you had done some digging and you found that it is not permitted for them to remove trees that are overhanging in public way. How did that ever pan out? Yeah, it, 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 you know, unfortunately, these are not street trees. So that, that particular statute, I mean, if that, you know, that, that relates to street trees, you know, mm -hmm. so it's along a public right of way where that particular statute uh, comes into play, not, not a not right support. Okay. Yeah. No, I, Dan, I'll tell you, we, we look for every possible mm -hmm. angle, uh, WRPD, uh, anything that we thought we had some leverage, and every time we, we went down the path, we, we, we came up with nothing, nothing that we could enforce. Well, we still have, and I don't mean to keep beating the drum, but it's important for us to talk about this, in my opinion. Uh, we did have some, some residents who claim that they are, you know, have it on good authority that certain trees were taken down beyond the easement, purely on their property and they weren't compensated for them. Have we, have, has any of these residents submitted to the town of Middleborough a list of stumps, just a number of stumps that they feel went beyond the line into their property? Well, I, I, I think Rep. Oral was, was trying to be the inter intermediary with, with NSTAR on those particular, that, you know, they profess and in their plans, they say they will mitigate, you know. Something. It seems so. So, you know, it, it, but it, you know, it, it, when you when you lose something, you know, the way and and the way that it happens, you know, right. where many people didn't even know it was going to happen, it happened, and then you know, all the, all those trees were gone. Uh, I, I think people lose confidence that in fact 
they're going to follow through on what even they, their their paperwork says they're going to do. Um, you know, I think I think people would have liked to have an opportunity to to save some some of some of that vegetation, and they they weren't even given the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but but certainly um, there is a process uh, to go through. They say they'll come back. They'll say they mitigate um, to some degree, and, and and certainly people should follow through on that. Um, mm -hmm. But as we know, if, if people are are threatening litigation, then they they back off. Questions of the town manager? Any correspondence? Mr. Nolden. Item five. This is from the uh, Park Department. At the most recent Park Department meeting, a discussion took place regarding the Tispaquin family campground. Um, should the town choose to purchase the property, the commission gave consideration to placing it under their care and jurisdiction. Following motion was made to best describe their thoughts on the matter. The unanimous consensus of the park commissioners is in favor of acquiring this land or any land that benefits the residents of Middleborough, contingent upon the town adequately funding the park department for maintenance of such land indefinitely. Um, I, I appreciate that the park department discussed this. Um, I, I don't think that's a really ringing endorsement of <laughs> that particular piece of land. Um, but I do appreciate that they discussed it. No, that's, mm. good. that's good. Well, you know, on those lines, it is hopefully capable for them to easily get cost comparisons for similar projects like, say, Morton Park and Plymouth, which has similar beach uh, landing, camping areas, those kinds of things, which I think is what we're kind of getting at here, is if we do this, we have something of that nature. Um, run by the town, so um, I, I do believe that there are avenues for them to get those cost comparisons and maybe really get that down to the root of what this would probably cost us per year to maintain it properly. <laughs> we'll go from there, but I understand them inching into it. It could have a decent price tag attached to it, but it would be really nice to have something like this for our folks. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Um, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Mr. Crowley? No, I'm good. I just have uh, item six of the uh, lease termination of the property located off Thompson Street, known as the Gibbs property. Where does that leave us? Um, probably shy of someone to do some maintenance. I, I, that's the way I interpret it. Um, I'll, I'll find out. I didn't uh, inquire of, you know, what the, the future plans are. Okay. I think we just put out an RFP. Well, the Conservation Commission will put out an RFP. So we didn't, well, we that's did what they did the last time. That's yeah. probably what it was. I think I was on the board when the Conservation Commission. Yeah. When it went out. So yeah, it would be an RFP. There was interest in it the last time. I'm sure there'll be interest in it this, in it this time as well. Okay. Anything else for correspondence? Nope. I don't have it either. Can, can I just, um, you'll, you'll know one of the items is the GASB 45 report. GASB is oh, the yes. um, other post-employment benefits. We'll put that on an agenda in January. Um, the good news is as um, as we make changes in the health plan, it brings the overall cost of uh, future health care down. And so our outstanding liability, you know, continues to come down. Uh, and I think it, you know, I'm, the way I'm reading it, I think it's to the point where uh, we will be able to put together a funding schedule that will, you know, allow us to pay off this unfunded liability over 30 odd years or so, similar to what we're doing with our, our pension liability. Good. Uh, and, you know, get us, you know, at least we'll be able to say, hey, we're, we're making real, real progress here, and this is not just a problem we're not addressing. So, uh, you know, we'll start by reviewing the report, and then hopefully shortly thereafter, you know, we'll be able to present a funding schedule. All right. 
Nobody has anything on uh, uh, anything else for correspondence? Okay. I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday and uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. The motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Merry